Animal agriculture represents 40% of global ag output and contributes to the livelihoods and food security of billions of people. And yet animal agriculture is under more scrutiny than ever when it comes to sustainability and being eco-friendly. Tonight we're talking with ABS Global about the importance of genetics and how they've been at the forefront of this cutting edge practice for 80 years. Good evening and welcome to a very special edition of Rural America Live. I'm Christina Loren. ABS Global is the largest bovine genetics business in the entire world. And since they've built trust with their customers over eight decades, you might already be familiar with the solutions that they provide. Well, tonight we're going to examine the critical role that genetics play in the food supply chain and how a genetic strategy can bring significant value to your herd. Joining us tonight, geneticist and director of global beef product development, Dr. Matthew Cleveland, and beef sales director for ABS North America, Todd Sears joins us. Thanks both for joining us tonight. Thank you, Christina. Well, let's start with a little bit of your background so our audience can get to know you a little bit better. Matthew, let's start with you. Sure, I'm, uh, I'm originally from Arizona. Um, I joined the company uh, 16 years ago next week. Uh, I currently reside just north of Madison, Wisconsin, and, and I'm responsible for the ABS Global Genetic Program for beef. And so really my team and I work to ensure that we continue to make genetic progress for our customers. You are basically securing the food supply for future generations is what you're doing. The work that you do is so critical. So we're so excited to have you here. You. And um, for those of you at home, you can't really tell at this moment, but this man is so passionate about what he does. I think it's just going to shine through throughout our conversation tonight. And it's important because what we feed our children, what we put in our own bodies, it matters. And Absolutely. so that's why this conversation is so important. You know, let's talk a little bit about you, Todd. Tell us about your background. Yeah, Christina, I've been with ABS for 25 years now. I'm a resident and native of North Dakota. And so I've worked in the industry for all those years. My role is to work directly with our salespeople and our sales managers to work with our customers out in the field. So that's my connection is right to, to the end product, end point for us. So. Okay, well we have a lot to unpack, so let's get started. Something that's on everybody's mind right now, consumers are being encouraged to eat less red meat because of the impact on the planet. Not because of the science um, behind it, it's, it's, an, it's a very popular notion that we're hearing from celebrities, celebrity chefs. It's not really fair to the American rancher and to the scientists that really work on the genetics behind our beef production. So for those who are out there who are watching tonight, talk a little bit about the critical part of the food system that genetics play and the high quality protein options that are available, delicious and nutritious. How do you view this trade off between what consumers want, how they source their beef, and how do you mitigate all that with, with what's being said in the media? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, consumers all over the world want protein options that address their needs, their, you know, their traditional need, their nutritional needs. Um, but they also, they're concerned about animal health. They're concerned about the planet. And, and, you know, what we know is that meat is an important part of our culture. It's an important part of our diet, but it's also an important part of our economy. And so simply reducing uh, meat production is really going to have a number of un unintended consequences. I think that I'm so pleased because my son will actually eat meat. So many kids, they won't eat meat. And then we see the actual health impacts of not getting that important iron in your diet, especially at a young age. And so this is something that we really need to address head on. We've all heard the word sustainability being used in relation to the beef industry. How should producers and consumers think about that concept of sustainability? Well, I think one of the challenges that we have is we often hear the word uh, sustainability used inter interchangeably with carbon footprint. And, and while that is important, uh, really sustainability is about more than just how an industry like the beef industry impacts our natural resources. A sustainable food system is, is really, you know, it's just as much about healthier animals and more nutrients nutritious products, but also importantly for, for our farmers and ranchers, it's about protecting the legacy of family farms and ranches for the future. And, and to do that, we really need to customize solutions. So sustainability is really about customizing solutions, you know, based on farmer and rancher needs, whether we're talking about climate or whether we're talking about the environment. And, and so, you know, we're really looking for solutions. You know, when we're looking for solutions, you know, we really, um, there's an overlooked part of the supply chain, I, I think, and, and that's genetics, right? So breeding 
protein is really where a sustainable food supply starts. And, and so as a geneticist, I can really see uh, the opportunity for genetics to have a significant impact on creating a more sustainable beef supply chain. And it really excites me to continue to innovate in this way, really on top of the progress that the industry is already making. Yeah, it's huge. And when you think about the impact going forward as the global population continues to grow, this is necessary. The work that you're doing right now is going to change the future. It's going to help to feed future generations. Let's talk a little bit more about ABS. ABS Global is part of Genus, a world-leading animal genetics company. ABS is the largest cattle breeding business in the world with customers in more than 70 countries worldwide. And their sister organization, PIC, is an international leader in providing genetically superior pigs. Here's just a quick look at how ABS is pioneering animal genetic improvement to help nourish the world. Since Rock Prentice founded ABS in 1941, innovation has been part of our DNA. So from the pioneering of freezing of bovine semen to the launch of Sexal and the development of new era genetics, we've really made our mark on the bovine genetics industry. Our global headquarters is located in the heart of America's Dairyland, DeForest, Wisconsin, about 15 miles north of Madison. We're proud to partner with progressive producers, offering tailored genetic solutions to help them drive down the cost-effective production of high-quality beef and milk. Our people and customers are at the core of everything we do at ABS. It's so important to me personally that we help farmers all around the world. Because I grew up as a farm kid, and milking cows, cleaning pens, seeing animals grow up, it's really true that when we take care of animals, they take care of us and they take care of the world. It's great to be part of a team that's passionate about agriculture. Many of us have grown up in the industry and we're super proud to be working hard with you to preserve the legacy of your farming generations. Our experience runs 80 years deep and almost 2,000 colleagues strong. We're always challenging what's possible, even if we set the industry standard here at ABS. I think that's just a great introduction to ABS. Todd, tell us a little bit about the history. I mean, 80 years is a long time. How have you innovated? Just some of the highlights, if you will. Yeah, I think when you look <laughs> at those 80 years, really a lot of that was, was about maybe questioning some of the things that were going on or the way things were done, but also looking at how do we make our customers more profitable and really driving for that increased food production as well as the profitability for our producers. And it's always been driven by that. And like you said in the video there, it's, you know, it's about people who are passionate about agriculture, who've been there, who are part of the industry as well. So. That's really just the history of ABS, I think, is quite interesting because of that. Yeah, the history of genetics as well. I mean, you look at the last 80 years, how far genetics have come. I talk a little bit about how genetics have changed over that 80-year period of time. Yeah, I think as you look at the, that change of genetics over that 80 years, I mean, we started off with having the first AI calf out of frozen semen, you know, moving on through that time period into the 60s where we did some early development work with a lot of the you know, really did some early project test work that Matthew's continuing today. We did some of that early work with Dr. Ray Woodward and, and uh, you know, in those early 60s, we had EPDs before the breed associations did. You take that on into the, you know, into the 90s when we worked with uh, the, really looking at, at sire selection indexes through the Angus Sire Alliance with the Circle A. And then you take it back to where we're at today. You know, we're just putting in a lot of new state-of-the-art facilities where we really can collect these bulls and do really good things with them. You know, our sex cell technology where we can sex semen, and you take that and bring that forward, it's just really changed a lot of what you can do and how you can do it. So I think it's it's really exciting to see that innovation that's came from ABS in the, that time period. I love it. And we're looking at these old photos on the screen right now. It's just amazing to see how far ABS has come with cattle genetics and reproduction. Let's talk about genetics specifically and the exciting things that are happening right now at ABS. Tell us about the approach to help determine the right genetics for a customer's operation. Yeah, you know, I think the really the big thing for us is we have a really broad, especially when you look at our beef, we have a broad line of bulls we offer to a lot of different customers. So it's not truly one size fits all, but what, what's the best thing that we can do for that customer in their scenario, their situation, even to where their cattle are going to, you know, where are they marketing, what's their end product type of thing? 
we really try to have enough offering and a diverse offering where we can offer something unique to all those producers out there today. And you think about what you're able to offer now versus 80 years ago. It's, you're at the forefront of all of it. It's amazing to think of AVS Global, how far you've come. Do you have any examples of, of how you've seen this work? Yeah, and I think one of the real good examples, I think that the innovation that's came along is you look at the technologies that we have as, long, as well as the genetics. You know, today we're really starting to move into where we're talking about sex semen to make those females and going on using a terminal type of product on the back end. And we're really calling that our, our sex cell 6040 program. And really it's kind of just a combination of, of a lot of years of things that for some certain producers and that are out there that that will fit. It's kind of a next chance for them to really take the technologies, the genetics that are out there and maybe take that next step. All right. Well, New Era Genetics, you're going to hear that a lot tonight. New Era Genetics by ABS Global encompasses all proprietary ABS beef breeding programs, evaluations, and indices. These genetics represent the essential deeper dive into genetic progression for traits linked to feed efficiency, health, carcass metrics as well. Let's watch a short video on how New Era Genetics works. is a highly focused, intentional approach to unlocking greater genetic value that will help drive total profitability on your farm. The Cutting Edge platform symbolizes the next chapter in the history of ABS beef genetics, a distinctive new era of beef genetic improvement capability. So this has been accomplished by intense selection of elite genetics out of our own nuclear system. This enables us to place the right genetics within our customer systems to maximize their profitability. And having done that, we then collect the data to validate and demonstrate the results that we're able to achieve. New Era first launched in July of 2017. So the New Era T14 line is a pole black composite, really combining the best of two breeds, the Simmental and the Angus. This enables us to deliver the most profitable genetics to the beef supply chain, delivering on growth, feed efficiency, and carcass value. These genetics create more profit and greater success for every stakeholder in the food supply chain. With New Era, we're really at the start of a long and exciting journey. We're working closer with packers and retailers, really getting closer to the needs of that end consumer, really demonstrating the value that genetics can bring, both in terms of driving down the cost of production of high quality beef and improving the sustainability credentials of the beef industry. As consumer preferences and expectations continue moving toward more high quality products and documented sustainability, ABS is the genetic company that will continue pushing for genetic progress to provide solutions. So genetic potential really sets the maximum performance of those animals across the supply chain. We need to remember as a beef industry, we're continually competing with other animal proteins, with pork, with chicken, with fish, and more, more so today, non-meat meats. As such, really the goal of New Era is to equip the industry to better compete by making animals more efficient and more sustainable. 80 years in business. Matthew, how does New Era address the needs of the beef supply chain, including the farmers and ranchers who might be watching tonight? Sure, I mean, I think the place we need to start is that our, our customers are really in, in the business of producing beef, and we started developing New Era Genetics nearly 10 years ago by listening to our customers and, and really understanding you know, what their wants and needs are, and we continue to improve it, uh, you know, in part by also recognizing the needs all the way across the beef supply chain. You know, genetics are the foundation for the next generation uh, you know we get better animals every generation hopefully and and ultimately we're looking for a, uh, a beef product that that is of higher quality and, and and more desired and and really we create a genetic solution that we believe address those needs around efficiency profitability and, and yes even sustainability and so really excited to be here today to, to share a few more stories about how new our genetics has impacted the beef beef producers and you know American beef as well everybody wants our beef we got the best beef in the world <laughs> 100%. Yep. Genetics are a big part <laughs> of the reason why. You. you know, speaking of which, you have a great message here from Ben Lohman, who's a well known in the cattle industry. He says, as one of the leaders in the beef industry in both research and validation, we recognized a long time ago that if we wanted real progress, we needed to control the process. It's a process that we kick started in 2014 with the design of our first New Era Index. And 
have been relentlessly validating ever since. I love that. I mean, how does it feel to have a big name like that really kind of in love with what you're doing? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's got to feel pretty good. Okay, well, before we go to break, we want to open up our conversation to you. We want to get you involved. You're an important part of our show. We want to hear from you tonight. Our number is 877-731-6733. And we know that we're covering a lot of ground here tonight. So we have a great resource. It's a QR code. You can watch full-length videos, hear genetic success stories, and get in contact with an ABS representative. All you have to do, if you've never done this before, let me kind of walk you through it. You want to open up your camera on your smartphone. It took me a minute, too. So you get your camera going. You point it right at that, that little sign you see on the screen there. Point it there. You might even have to press your button right in the middle of the screen as if you're trying to get a focus. And that will automatically connect you to a link that will take you to the ABS Global site, or you can just go straight there, www.absglobal.com. Also, after the broadcast, the ABS team is going to join a conversation, an additional extra hours conversation for you on Facebook Live. And so if you don't get through tonight, keep that question handy and you can ask them on Facebook Live. Just search ABS Beef. We'll be right back with more Rural America Live after this. Welcome back to Rural America Live. Joining us tonight is ABS Global, the largest bovine genetics business in the world. And they are taking your calls. Our phone lines are open. We'd love to hear from you tonight. The number is 877-731-6733. Joining us once again on set, geneticist Dr. Matthew Cleveland. Always great to have a geneticist in the house with us. I absolutely agree. <laughs> and the director of global beef product development with ABS, Beef Genetic Nucleus Manager, Kenny Wells, joins us now. Thanks for joining us tonight, Kenny. Thanks for having me. We appreciate both of you spending some time with us tonight. Let's dive right back into tonight's conversation and talk about the work being done at ABS Global, how genetics support a more sustainable food system. I'm sure our viewers, they want to hear more about how these genetics are being put into practice and what it takes to develop them to begin with. But let's start with your background. Yeah, I joined ABS seven years ago to drive kind of the growth and development of our genetic nucleus breeding program. Before that, I'd spent about the same amount of time, seven years working in beef cattle research and extension roles at a couple of universities in the Midwest. Wow, okay, so so you know what you're doing. You went to school for this. You've, you've been researching genetics for a long time. Now, we heard the reasons why ABS developed new era genetics. Tell us more about what it takes to create new era genetics, what it took to get to where you are now, and how your customers actually put them into practice. Sure. Yeah, so for us, it's a, it's a, it starts with an intensive embryo transfer program. Uh, our target for this year is to make and transfer about 4,000 embryos. Um, all those embryos are, are made uh, with the intent of maximizing genetic gain for our proprietary terminal line index. Um, and then we'll funnel all the calves back through our testing location in Wisconsin uh, and do performance testing and development uh, of all those cattle. Um, we collect you know, a pretty standard script of, of data that, that any committed seed stock producer would collect. That's uh, birth weights, weaning weights, yearling weights. We collect the ultrasound carcass indicators. Probably the thing that I'm the most, uh, I guess, proud of in terms of, of what we do is, is our commitment to feed efficiency testing. Uh, every, in, in, eh, every animal that comes through the program uh, gets feed efficiency tested or gets a individual feed intake tested, uh, both male and female. And so, Along with that, we, we also continue to look for new traits or, or novel ways of measuring traits that are out there today. So for instance, uh, we're in talks with a technology company uh, to pilot some camera data collection systems and just see how that may work into our system. Ultimately, all that data that we collect uh, feeds back into our genetic evaluation, which is run in-house. Uh, and that, that information along with the genomics and the pedigree uh, data that we have is, is used to calculate EPDs and, and the selection indices that we use in our breeding program. Wow, okay, that sounds like a complex process. Let's just start with kind of the basics. How do you select the right bulls to come into the program before they would be available to customers? Because this is something that was 
it used to be done just visually. Yeah, yeah, and that's still a component of it. Um, you know, kind of ideally, we, we'd like to be able to rank those bulls top to bottom and then just take the highest indexing bulls to stud. But for anybody uh, that's ever been in the cattle breeding business and, and made matings and raised cattle, you understand that it doesn't always work out quite that simply. So we understand that the cattle have to be sound and functional and, and safe to handle. And so we're going to evaluate all those cattle for structural integrity, for reproductive soundness, and for temperament. And we're going to call anybody that doesn't meet our threat thresholds for those things. Uh, after that, then we're going to let the indices and the data tell us which bulls should come to stud. Wow, the data and the data it tells you so much. I mean, it's yeah. amazing what you're able to tell what the data produces. Tell me a little bit about this intensive selection. Are there any other steps, any criteria that's required before bulls reach commercial production? Yeah, as a matter of fact, the bulls do have to clear a couple more hurdles before they kind of get widely distributed in our commercial business. Um, we've got a network of cooperative testing herds throughout the, the world really uh, that we work with to help validate traits like calving ease and fertility uh, before we broadly distribute the semen on those bulls. So any young sire that comes in is, is destined to produce several thousand units of semen that get distributed into that network and that helps us weed out any problems before it would get to you know to the, our customers basically. Uh, fertility is a good example. We call several bulls, a, a significant number I guess of the bulls that we bring in every year uh, for fertility to help avoid our customers having a negative experience with fertility at their operations. Yeah because that can be tough and, yeah. and it can be costly as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's one of the first things that our, our producers or our customers experience with the product that we provide to them as well. I love that. Okay, we are going to go to the phones. Taylor from Colorado joins our conversation tonight. Thanks for joining us, Taylor. Go right ahead. Hi. Um, yeah, my first question was, how exactly does ABS and their team de determine the value of genetics? Yeah, I mean, I... Uh... Thanks for your question, Taylor. I think yeah, that's a really great question. It's certainly something we're going to be talking a, a lot more about as we go on through the show. But, but really, you know, as Kenny just talked about, it's really a, a lot of it's about the testing program. So it's about understanding how our genetics are actually performing in the field in commercial systems. And that really helps us, one, understand what the value of those genetics are to our customers. And then, two, it allows us to then demonstrate that value. And so our customers can actually experience that in their own systems. Okay, good question, Taylor. We appreciate that. We're going to go to Michigan. Daniel joins the conversation now. Go right ahead, Daniel. Yeah, I wanted to know about how I could uh, get a hold of an EBS representative in my area. Um, Sure. Thanks, Daniel. I mean, um, really, you can go to uh, ABS, uh, ABS, sorry, absglobal.com uh, and, and search for ABS on RFD TV or just search for RFD TV. And that will take you to a landing page, which will allow you to uh, put your information in and we will have a rep from your area contact you. So thanks for that question. Yeah, and if you've got your phone handy, you might want to just go ahead and point it at the screen right now. If you're interested in learning more, we have a QR code ready to go. This is a first on RFD TV, <laughs> by the way. We're getting there. We're getting there. we got a QR code and a link here on the screen. Now, if you've never done this before, here's how it works. You take out your phone, open up your camera, and point it right at the screen like you're going to take a picture of your television. Click right in the middle of the screen and a link will pop up. If you click on it, it will take you straight to the ABS Global website and to a quick video that efficiently walks you through the entire process. Now, Matthew, we've heard the reason that ABS wanted to develop a unique solution to address the profitability of beef production through genetics. And we heard from Kenny, happy to hear from Kenny tonight as well, about how you create these genetics with incredible selection intensity. Tell us about how they're actually applied, though, on farms and ranchers once you get to that end user. Sure. Yeah, I mean, we've created a genetic solution for beef producers and the beef supply chain that's really focused on that whole pasture to plate profitability. It's really focused on, on that, that entire process, really, from conception to consumption. And, and it really starts with that breeding uh, strategy. Uh, and so we, you know, we have a 
number of different customers. And so whether those customers are in the United States or if they're in Europe or, or even Asia, um, you know, they're really focused on, on that pasture to plate profitability. And so, you know, really what our program has been about is, uh, is tailoring those new era genetics to those particular production systems so that, that, so that our, our customers and, and our producers can really experience that, that improved profitability across that entire supply chain. And what I love as well is you're not just improving the overall quality of beef here in the United States, you're in other countries as well, so you're raising that bar globally. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. ABS Global, there's a reason Absolutely. why that's the title of your company. Now, talk about that global scale. Tell us about the various types of farms and ranches around the world where new era genetics play an important role. Yeah, we're certainly in a lot of different countries. We, we export beef semen, uh, beef genetics all around the world. I think Brazil offers a, a really interesting example. There are a lot of beef cows in Brazil, approximately twice as many beef cows in Brazil as there are in the United States. And um, you know, the, the vast majority of those beef cows are of the Nolari breed, which is adapted to the tropical and subtropical environments that we find uh, that we find all around Brazil. And Brazilian beef producers have found that crossing a non-tropical breed on those Nolari females will yield a calf um, that produces a higher, higher quality of beef in a more efficient and sustainable manner. And so we've developed a, a product for this breeding strategy that we call ABS X Black. And we're really we're using our new era genetics. Uh, to tailor to, to this particular system in order to address the increasing demand for the domestic consumption of beef in Brazil. And so really we're raising the quality of the beef for the Brazilian consumer, but we're also raising the profitability for that, for that Brazilian, uh, for that Brazilian pr pr uh, producer. Uh, another great example would be beef on dairy. So we can talk about beef on dairy in the United States. We can also talk about it in the UK or across Europe or even or even in South America. Um, and this is the, this is a strategy where dairy producers are using beef genetics on their lower va genetic value females uh, in order to produce a product that is useful for the beef supply chain. You know, let's talk a little bit more specifically how this relates to new era technology, if you will. When you get to that beef on dairy, I think a lot of people just kind of perked up because it's a hot topic right now. Sure, absolutely. We, we certainly hear a lot about beef on dairy in the, in the industry today. And just to give a little bit of background of when we talk about beef on dairy, what do we mean? I mean, dairy producers typically have a, an objective to raise the genetic value of their herd. And oftentimes that's related to, to milk production or milk components, for example. Um, in order to do that, they need to find the best females in their herd in order to, to, to breed the next generation. You know, traditionally what they did is they bred all of their females to dairy genetics. Um, and then they selected the best females to go back to the herd, which got a bit easier when genomics came, came around about 10 years ago. However, what that left them with was females as well as male calves uh, that they didn't need. And so those, those females and those male calves went into the beef supply chain. Um, and so there was a place for them. There was a market for them. But they were certainly suboptimal at, at producing beef. That really wasn't the, the product that the beef supply chain you know, really wanted. And so in, in the last few years, what we've seen is dairy producers have increased their use of sex genetics. That allows them to, to breed their, the top end of their females to the, the, the dairy genetics that they actually want to get replacements on. And then what that, what, what's left is the females that don't need to create a dairy replacement. Um, and so those females then are open to, to, to breed beef too. Uh, and so rather than just using any beef genetics, you know, we've developed our new era genetics that are really tailored to that beef on dairy breeding strategy. And, and our goal is with new era genetics and beef on dairy is to maximize the value um, of that genetic decision to the dairy farmer, but also to maximize the value across the entire beef supply chain. Wow, and this is something that a representative will take the time to work with the producer, to go over, to ingest all that data, to, to find the right fit for your operation. It can't be easy because every operation is so different. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have, you know, we, yeah, we have advisors that will, will go to the dairy and, and really develop a, a breeding plan for them to let them know these are the cows you should breed uh, to the dairy genetics and these are the cows you should put beef genetics in. And we've certainly spent a lot of time developing those beef genetics to make sure that they are the most profitable and most valuable across that beef supply chain. You know, let's talk about that because it all comes down to dollars and cents and everyone's Absolutely. trying to protect their bottom line. What does that added value look like for the dairy producer and for the beef supply chain? Yeah, for the dairy producer, I mean, the first thing the producer typically wants is they want to get a calf on the ground. So they want to get the cow pregnant and they want to avoid any, any calving issues. And, and so, you know, we do that by, uh, by using the testing process similar, similar to what, what Kenny talked about is really to address that profitability of that dairy farmer, you know, first and foremost. Then 
what the dairy producer has is they have a calf that's produced by New Era Genetics that are highly demanded by the, the beef supply chain because we've been able to demonstrate that they have the genetic potential to efficiently produce high quality beef. And we really have many examples where, where, cat, where New Era Genetics calves that are beef on dairy um, are more efficient, they're higher quality, they're more profitable than even native beef calves wow. in the feed yard. And so really, I think it's a great example of better breeding, creating a more sustainable as well as a more profitable supply chain. It's a counterintuitive way. Mm -hmm. You know, science Absolutely. always proves us wrong. <laughs> so I love that. And I love the fact that you, you're you so into the research that you're able to quantify the changes as well. Uh, it's incredible. It really is incredible. We're going to go back to the phones. Robert of Nebraska joins the conversation now. Thanks for joining us, Robert. Go right ahead. Yeah, have they been chasing that carcass trend so much that they are not paying any attention to the confirmation and the fertility of the cattle now? It looks like that's the way things have gone the last 15 years. Yeah, Robert, uh, thank you for, for your question. I mean, I mean, the way we, we tend to look at genetic improvement is we really need to focus on all of the traits that are going to, to impact you know, the profitability and sustainability of, that, of any given production system. And so you know, I think we're going to hear a little bit more from, from uh, Kenny in, in a minute, but uh, you know, there, are, there are optimal ways to make breeding decisions to where we can focus on the terminal side of things. So we could focus things on things like carcass merit, on things like growth and feed efficiency, but we can also then focus on the things that are important to the cow herd, things like fertility, things like longevity. Um, and those are, those are different breeding decisions to make, but we can combine them in, into the optimal program that allows you to make the progress you need both on, on the cow side as well as on that terminal side. And again, we'll hear a bit more about that from Kenny in just a minute. Yeah, we look forward to hearing more about that. Okay, thank you for that call, Robert. Good question as well. We yeah, always yeah. appreciate any question. Um, I'm sure sometimes there's someone else out there in the audience who's wondering the same thing. So yeah. we do encourage you to call in with your questions tonight. 877-731-6733 is the number to call. You know, Kenny, tell us about what you're doing here in the U.S. for beef cow-calf herds with New Era Genetics. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, well, it's true that uh, economic weightings of, of different traits are, are different within different production systems around the globe. Uh, the things that the traits that drive terminal profitability are, are really largely the same across all the production systems you can imagine around the world. Feed efficiency, for example, is always going to be important to, to no matter how you're producing beef. And so we know that uh, with our team of geneticists at ABS, we can tweak those relative economic weightings on those traits and, and come up with a, a way to, to sort the genetics that work the best for any production system. And that the U.S. beef cow-calf sector is no exception to that. And so... Um, you know, we realize at ABS that most of our customers come to us today looking for things like highly reliable calving east sires for first calf heifers, for proven maternal lines to make the next generation of replacement females. And make no mistake, this new era product that we're talking about tonight is primarily a, a terminal focused product. Um, so that being said, the, the real fit for New Era is in a system where a producer buys in replacement females or in a system where they're, they're willing to implement the, the kind of production practices and management that you need to make the replacement females from a smaller portion of the cow herd. Uh, with our ABS sex cell sex female genetics, um, we feel that we enable producers to, to do just that, to make those replacement females from a smaller portion of their cow herd. Uh, one concept I think Todd already mentioned that, that we think will work well as a strategy for producers is what we're calling the 60-40 program. Basically, that's using, in a timed AI program, 60% uh, sex female genetics to make the replacement females and 40% terminal line genetics. And, and hopefully in that scenario, that's new era for us here tonight. Um, when you pair that with a, a terminal focused natural service sire to, to clean up those cows, the end result is that you, you've got sufficient replacement females made um, that, are, that are high quality females out of AI sires. And the resulting, the rest of the calf crop then is, is out of higher value terminal line type sires, uh, which results in a, a, a more valuable feeder calf crop at the end of the day. Ultimately, it's about making the, the right genetics, using the right genetics to make the right calf from the right cows within your herds. And, and I know that those are, those are maybe new concepts and things, and, and I would encourage anybody that's interested in, in a concept like that to reach out to your 
local ABS representative or, or to our website to find out more about it. Yeah, you know, you can't put a price on peace of mind, but right. I mean, that's what you're giving our ranchers as well, a huge peace of mind, an investment that they can really trust. Let's hear from an ABS customer now about how this breeding strategy has worked on his operation. This is rancher Mark Fulton, located in South Dakota. In the early years, what we were most interested in was, you know, disposition and udders, you know, and then trying to get a uniform product. And that's what, uh, it took a while, but that's a great thing about genetics and, and using AI as a tool over time, it really improved. We would go to ABS and talk to them that uh, we would like to try and do a better job. And they say, well, we'll have a program that we think that you should try. And then through our both, both of our efforts, you know, we've done those studies at the ranch. And that's what I'm most proud of. Instead of reading about a study, we did it at the ranch. And ABS gave us the ability to do that. There was no way that we couldn't, you know, given the opportunity from ABS to use the new era terminal cross, we had to take that opportunity where we're doing a program cattle like we are here at the ranch. We needed that chance to see whether that terminal cross could make that those feeder cattle and those finished cattle that much more profitable. We'll have to stick with, you know, our good Angus-based cow that we use through ABS genetics and have part of our, the main bulk of our herd maternal, but it gives us the option to look at a terminal cross and on these feeder cattle have a terminal cross. This first year, we'll see what we have. We'll take those new era calves and we'll finish them and see whether that backs up in the lot. In the end, it's the beef that we're raising off these animals for the end consumer. Ah, so much science. I'm sure the consumer, the normal consumer out there has no idea how hard you all work <laughs> to bring us that delicious beef. This is such a great example of success for an ABS customer, but we know it's not an exact science, although we're getting better and better statistically speaking. But how do you ensure these genetics will work in your customers' herds? Yeah, and I think as, as we just heard from Mark, really the key is understanding how the genetics perform in the real world. And, and to do that, we have to collect a lot of data. Um, and so we really built up a really strong data collection program that allows us to understand that when we put genetics out into the real world, into, into that beef supply chain, we understand how they're going to perform. And that we're able to, to talk about and demonstrate that to our customers. Um, and so... Um, you know, we really developed a really strong program around validation, and, and I really, uh, you know, now I'd like to introduce Jared Wareham, who is the ABS New Era Business Development Manager. He's, he's going to talk a little bit more about how we do this, so let's take a listen. So folks, it's time to do another ride-along with the ABS team, and this one I think we're going to have some fun talking about validation trials, which is something we do all over the world. Uh, we have to know what our genetics deliver to our customers, what they do, what they can't do, and also to help us improve. It's that measure twice, cut once type of philosophies to make sure we can deliver uh, proven, predictable performance. So the validation trial we're kicking off here in the Midwest is actually going to be using our T14, our terminal line that we've developed in-house, to um, better understand their performance in conventional versus non-implanted systems. It's going to be a birth to harvest system or a birth to harvest trial uh, where we're going to measure conventionally fed T14 sired cattle against the non-implanted T14 sired cattle. So I've got a couple semis here that brought down uh, a bunch of these T14 bulls are going to be used natural service. loaded up getting ready to fire the diesel up and head southbound got a lot of miles to cover today uh, several producers to work with two of which are the ones we mentioned yesterday that will be involved in this validation trial we're kicking off these are the cleanup bulls that are going to follow up the ai protocols uh, that'll be in place for the for the trial. This will run multiple years, obviously, uh, conception to birth to harvest. And it, again, it's going to cover conventionally fed cattle versus non-implanted fed cattle. And the reason we think that's so important 
is it, it's a reality that we may lose the use of beta agonists and implants altogether at some point in time. We don't know that, but it's, it, there are signs that, that suggest that could happen. And as a genetics improvement company, we have to stay ahead of the game and find solutions to, to problems and pain points that may arise down the road. And so that's why we're doing this trial. We want to know what impact genetics can make and how do we keep our producers successful, profitable, sustainable. That's why we're rolling. I love hearing from real farmers and real ranchers just like that. Now, we want to hear from you tonight. Don't forget, our phone lines are still open. The number to call is 877-731-6733. When we come back, the North America Business Development Director at ABS Global, Brandon Souter, will join us to talk about what the supply chain has told ABS it's seeking from genetics. We'll be right back. Stay with us. And check out ABS's podcast, Raising the Stakes, a look at real-world examples of how producers and packers continuously try to meet the needs of the ever-growing world population. You can listen on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. Welcome back to Rural America Live. If you're just joining us, tonight we have ABS Global here talking about their work with New Era Genetics as a solution for increasing the profitability of beef production on your operation. Now, you're an important part of this show. We want to hear from you tonight. Our phone lines are still open. The number is 877-731-6733. And joining our panel now is Brandon Souter, North America Business Development Director at ABS Global. Tell us a little bit about your background. Well, thanks for having me. So this is my 17th year with the company. I uh, live just right up the road in Mount Eden, Kentucky, uh, which is actually close to the dairy farm that I grew up on. So uh. as you mentioned, I work in business development. Uh, I lead a small team here in the U.S. and Canada, and our responsibilities could really be put into two different buckets. Uh, we work first and foremost to support our customers. So it's important to remember that you know, whether it's our cow-calf producers or it's our dairy farms, that's where this whole process starts. They're the ones that I, like, I like to say they breathe life into this process by creating the calves that we get so excited about. Um, the other half of our responsibility would be where we work in the supply chain. So we put a lot of effort into working to connect all the various segments of the supply chain for preferred grower networks. Um, and that's probably where we get the most excited because we have kind of a front row seat to see the, the evolution of these animals and we get to see them in the flesh and see the performance data. And, and it's really awesome to hear from customers how much they've been able to impact their bottom line. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it's just fantastic because it's, it's you're celebrating life, really. I mean, pretty much, yes. Yeah, <laughs> and improvement for, for somebody's bottom line. And we know how hard our ranchers work. So it's really, it's really great honest work that you're doing here. I love agriculture because we get to talk to real people, real farmers, real ranchers, and the people that support them through research and science. And I think for consumers who join us and get a chance to see all of you and an opportunity to hear from you and who you are, see your faces, it, it means a lot to make that connection. You know, we're going to talk about the supply chain opportunities. Share with us some of the recent conversations that you've had, what the ask is right now from the supply chain that genetics can deliver. It's pretty consistent. Consistent's the word. Uh, we hear on a daily basis the, the supply chain is looking for consistency of supply, consistency of quality, the highest quality, and then they want beef with a verified story. Um, all of our operations, it doesn't matter, you know, large, small, which, which segment they're in, you know, occupancy is a huge profit driver for them. So keeping their operations filled. But I have never met a producer that wouldn't gladly sign a larger check if they knew they could buy the best animals they could find. Um, because the efficiency of the animals is, is a huge impact to, to what their bottom line is and, and how well they're able to manage their own operations. And then, you know, the American consumers, they vote every day with their dollar. And what we're hearing loud and clear is that that traceable, uh, sustainable story that's verified, in some cases, that may actually mean as much to them as the quality of the eating experience. Absolutely, and what we, what we feed our children, the ranchers, they're feeding their children the same beef that we have on our place. That speaks volumes to me as well. Let's talk about these commitments being made by processors, retailers, and consumers right now around natural resources. What I've heard today is that genetics is a critical part of the solution for companies and farmers and ranchers who are trying to meet their own sustainability goals. Is that true, Brandon? It is 100% true. 
It doesn't matter the size of the operation, big, small, where it's at. Uh, genetics plays a huge role in driving those efficiencies, uh, particularly with a program like New Era, where we're very focused on the traits that we're selecting for. So I tell, you know, when we have discussions with customers all the time, you know, the feedback we get is the, the highest genetic animals always seem to be the highest producers. But on the flip side of that, the lowest genetic animals always seem to be at the bottom. Mm. That's so interesting. I mean, it must be kind of difficult to get through to consumers sometimes. There's a lot of noise you have to get through to, to make it clear what's happening. Uh, let's talk about, it's clear that genetics are important to all segments of the beef supply chain. How are you measuring that genetic impact in customer systems? Yeah, I mean, really, as we talked about earlier, demonstrating the value of our genetics through our collection of data in the real world is really critical to what we do. And we, you know, I'm really proud that we've been able to partner with some of the most innovative feed yards around the country uh, that allow us to collect that data we need to really demonstrate that value. And, and so we're going to hear from one of them today. Uh, we're going to hear from High Plains Feed Yard in Kansas. They've been a collaborative research partner of ours uh, for the last seven years. And so let's take a listen. The goal is a High Plains feed yard. We've moved uh, from being a commercial feed yard uh, into more of a feed yard that uh, makes a lot of our decisions on research. In 2015, uh, we formed okay. a partnership with ABS, and uh, I'd, I'd started feeding some cattle uh, for a gentleman in Garden City that uh, thought he was going to cross some cattle up uh, and get away from the regular, uh, just a Holstein steer going into this fed cattle market. and. Uh, uh, we weren't getting along very well with that. We started working with ABS on it, uh, and uh, so we've seen that improvement. And so we've actually made a product that's uh, actually, um, we can compete with anybody uh, uh, anywhere. We see the, the uh, beef on dairy uh, crosses that we've been working on in the last, since 2015. Uh, making a huge difference in sustainability out here. Um, number one is less land mass use, uh, along with less water usage. We'll, the cattle are much more feed efficient, so uh, we don't waste our natural resources. And Matthew, that's just one example of great success. Can you give us some other examples? Sure, I mean, we're engaged in ongoing trials to evaluate the performance of new era genetics, really from conception to harvest. You know, um, you know, we have a number of trials going in the United States, we have, and we have trials really running, running all around the world, collecting data on traits that are really important to our customers. Again, things like, like uh, Kenny talked about with, with feed conversion. And ultimately, we do this so that we can provide our customers with predictable for predictable performance from their genetic their genetic decision. Predictable, predictable. When it comes to pregnancy, using that word predictable, can you even imagine? A <laughs> hundred years ago, they probably never thought that yeah. those two words would go together. Um, we're gonna go to Randall in just a moment, but before we do, I wanna ask you, Brandon, talk about some of the work that you're doing and the feedback that you're getting. So when we look at the sustainable food systems and the goals that have been put in place to minimize the impact on the environment to maximize animal welfare and ultimately our consumers still expect you said it earlier the best beef that's 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 offered around the world we're very proud of that you know genetics will play a huge part in that um, it's important that we remember you know our customers own that genetic decision and those genetics impact the performance at every single segment of the supply chain but we have to recognize the fact that sometimes these animals change hands three four maybe even five times before they get to to their own harvest yeah. Uh, so for us, we put a lot of effort into driving those sustainable and traceable initiatives. Uh, and our goal is to really create some value from the retailer and have that shared back, which will unlock a lot of potential for our customers because we want to encourage them to, when they, when they make that genetic decision, to make sure they're maximizing the profit, not just for what they're creating, but on down the supply chain. Because as we've said, and I'll say it another time, genetics matter and they impact every part of that supply chain. Well, what's great is that the rancher's success, the end user's success is your success. You Absolutely. know what I mean? You, yeah. you have one common goal and so that's wonderful. Randall from Georgia joins the conversation now. Thanks for joining us. Randall, go right ahead. Thank you and I appreciate your time. I was saying, uh, a few minutes ago uh, that it is incredible what these farmers are doing for this country and I wish more and more people would be able to watch Rural America Live and see just what these farmers do for those of us, the rest of us in this country. I'm a, I'm a retired state government worker and a Vietnam era veteran, uh, just to let you know. Anyway, but the, what you all do, the farmers um, in this country and ranchers, what they do for the rest of us keep us fed with meat and 
eggs and milk, and we don't even realize what they do, and the technology they use is incredible. I saw a show last week on your, on your station, and I was shocked. I was shocked. You know, we think of farmers on a tractor and with their straw hat and going in to see mama for lunch. And, oh, my gosh, that's not even half of it. The equipment they use, the, the, like I said, I don't mean to be redundant, but the technology now involved in farming and the cost. And, and they need a lot of help from government. I, I hope they're, they're getting it. They're going to get it. But I just, we just wanted to thank you so much for what you do for America. It is not acknowledged, and it should be a lot more. We love you guys, and we thank you, and a lot of us are watching. So, again, thank you so much and, and for letting me talk on the air with you guys. It's just a treat, and I cannot thank you enough for what you do for this country, the you know, ranchers and farmers, and, and what you're teaching the young people, too, is just amazing. Thank you again. I don't mean to take too long. God bless you all. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Randall. And yeah, we absolutely agree. I mean, certainly farmers and ranchers, you know, are, are feeding this country and are feeding the world. And we really see it as our mission to provide the technology that those farmers and ranchers uh, can use in order to feed to feed the world. It's it's pretty humbly goal. coming from a Vietnam veteran too. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> but he's right. He's right. I know a lot of consumers join us each and every day here on RFD TV because they want to have a glimpse into how the ag industry functions, how it operates, and the people that are a part of it. And I just yeah. think that I just think the world. And so I, I love hearing from someone like Randall tonight. Okay, we are about to wrap up. I wanted to give you all an opportunity to share your final thoughts tonight, Matthew. Let's start with you. Sure, and, and we certainly appreciate the time, uh, Christina, to, to come and, and talk to your viewers. I mean, ultimately, ABS is about innovation. Innovation is at the core of who we are, and New Era Genetics is really just another step on this journey. You know, we continue to actively engage in, in applied research to really to address the challenges that we're facing as a global beef industry. You know, things, things related to animal health and well-being, things related to the environmental footprint. But also, most importantly, we're really delivering innovation for more efficient production uh, because because you know, we need our farmers and ranchers uh, to have sustainable profitability for the long term. And so you know, the way we kind of look at it is if we want a more sustainable food system, uh, genetics are really the key part of the solution. Yeah, farming is generational. And so, Absolutely. yeah, you got to look out for the next generations. That's one way to do it is through genetics. Okay, Todd, how about you? What are your final thoughts tonight? Yeah, I, I guess my big thing, you know, as you listen to this tonight, and there's been people said it that genetics matter. You know, we are in the food production business. Um, ultimately, that this goes back to feeding people. And I think as the world's changing, we have more opportunities today. How do we apply technologies with agriculture? How do we utilize the, the technologies we have and, and the innovation we're seeing? We'd love to come and visit with people. We just love them. Come go out to our website and, and, and get in contact with us. And we'd just love to sit down and talk to people about how we can help their operation because it is about helping them be more profitable and sustainable as their businesses. So. Yeah. ABSglobal.com is the website to visit. Kenny, how about you? What are your final thoughts tonight? Yeah, I think uh, I, I like uh, our company's vision as pioneering animal genetic improvement to help nourish the world. And I think that everything we've talked about tonight really speaks to that. And that's something that I'm really proud to, to be a part of. Yeah, I love, I love the humility that this, that this panel <laughs> provides. All of you are so smart. You've done so much for agriculture, not just here, but globally, and you're so humble. Brandon, what are your final thoughts for us tonight? I would be remorse without saying thank you to our customers, and thank you for having us here. So this has been fun. Uh, I think I, the only thing I would add is that, you know, we've said it before, Todd said it, genetics matter. So the choices and the sires and the genetics we use really have a major impact through the whole supply chain. Uh, the, I guess I'll add one other thing is the party doesn't end. One more uh, shout out to our friends that are on site at a High Plains feed yard in Kansas. I know some of the ABS crew is there and they are primed and ready for an ABS live event. So I believe on the screen is the, uh, the web address if anyone would like to continue to have, carry on the conversations afterwards. Yeah, we're taking this party to Facebook Live. <laughs> right. And we want to see you there. We've run out of time here on RFD TV, but the ABS team will continue that conversation. Just visit Facebook, look for ABS Beef, and we invite you to join the conversation. Also, if you'd like some more information, here is that QR code for you one more time. You pull out your phone, you open up the camera, you act like you're taking a picture, but what you'll notice is a link will pop up right before you do so. It took me a minute to figure it out as well. If this is your first time doing it, but it'll get you right where you need to go. You can also just go straight to their website, www.absglobal.com. I want to thank you all for joining us. Thank you for the commitment to the beef industry that you've made. 
and for the quality that you've given all of us. You keep driving it up. Thank you so much, APS Global.